So hi, I am KB with Nerdifiles. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing all right. All right. I, my first question, I have to dive right in. You know, how do you balance kind of making a show that allows the cast to really flourish in their careers while also creating a space, um, particularly with this show, that eliminates the stigmas around sex work and the adult entertainment industry these days? Oh, did we strike a balance? <laughs> I think you guys did, honestly, because it's very sex positive. Yes. Well, uh, listen, I think I think it helps that they all don't do the same thing. I think it helps that some of them are, you know, some of them are, are doing porn and some of them are definitely not. Um, some of them are implied. Some of them do mostly TikTok videos. Some of them, they kind of run the gamut on what they do. Um, and I think that just starting out from the get-go, we never we never put a label on it. We never shamed them. And really, I mean, I come from doing a show for many years, The Profit on CNBC, which was a business show. Um, so for me, um, this is a business that they all run and it's a very good business. So, you know, there was no, there was no shame in the beginning. There was no judgment. And I think that also, that helps kind of show all the different sides of it. And, um, and you know, I'm glad that we did strike a balance. I like that you said that it is a business because, I mean, truly it is just like, you know, all of the industries that we have. But do you think that your time like working on the profit really helped informed like how you wanted to tell certain cast member storylines in this particular show? I mean, I hope so. That's certainly what we set out for. It's certainly what I wanted. Um, I didn't want a show that was just catty drama, you know, um, I wanted a show that showed the business of it. Um, but, you know, again, you you put nine people in a house together and they're living together for eight weeks, you're going to obviously get the drama. Um, but I think the business to me was very important and showing them work and showing their struggles and showing how they make money and the behind the scenes of it all was very important to me. And I do think that my background helped sort of inform how we, you know, went about it on a day to day basis. Yeah. And social media plays such a huge role in actually everything that they do. So it is interesting. There's one particular cast member, and I guess I'm not going to spoil it, but um, it's not really a spoiler. But when their Instagram goes down and she's like, she's like freaking out because she's like, oh, I'm losing money every single minute that I don't have my Instagram up. And so right. I'm like, oh, that's very interesting. Like I don't work in an industry where like I have to be that tied to my social media. I mean, it's very helpful for the work that I do. But I mean, she truly was like, guys, I need to fix this. Like, or otherwise like I'm screwed. And so it's interesting to see how like social media even plays such a huge role in the business side of what they're doing too. Right. And it's interesting, like for us, we probably have business things in, um, in emails or text messages. They do too, to a certain extent, but they have everything in their DMs. So when their social media goes down, like people that they're going to collab with or do business with, um, they're, they don't know what to do. Yeah, <laughs> and literally. neither did she. And so she was a lot of times I'd be like, get back out there, get back out where, you know, we have to have you in the house. Like, and she was just, spiraling because she needed to fix it and didn't know how and you know there are different ways how she was trying to do it organically um but people can also pay to get it done but you know it's a lot of money it is it is and she was already losing money by not having the access and so you know in her mind she was like do I want to lose more money by getting someone else to fix it or can I just kind of figure right. out how to troubleshoot this myself and work like directly with the social media team itself like work with Instagram itself to try to figure it out yeah, yeah. But Instagram has a very weird way of like getting back to your, your account. It feels like a scam when you're trying yeah. to do it. So I understood her viewpoint 100% because mine's been shut down. And I'm like, it does feel kind of weird. Like, yeah. is this going to work or not? But And I know. tried to help her. Like being a producer, I was like, surely I know somebody that can help get it back on. And it wasn't that easy. It's like, not. you know, I had to like go through a system of emailing somebody and waiting weeks for a response. I'm like, wait a second, like this is, <laughs> what cult is this part of that I have no idea how it works? Yeah, and the email is kind of sketchy. Like I remember emailing and being like, I swear that this is probably just the hacker. Like whoever hacked into my account, this is probably their email based on what it looks like. Right, right. And um, then they're asking you for their credit card. Right, right, exactly. Um, but I have to ask this season, you know, was there any hesitation about a particular cast member storyline that you were kind of like... I don't know, you know, if we should share this part of their life, of their work, of their background, like that you were kind of sensitive about. Well, 
I mean, I think that when we ha we have one cast member in particular that does, you know, it, we we definitely walk a fine line the whole season, right? Especially when you have cast members that do porn, because we're not we're not filming a porn, we're not showing a porn. Um, that's not what we set out to do. So it is it is hard when in the background someone is, um, you know, in that industry and in very much that industry as a sex worker. It's it's towing that line of like what story you're telling and how far you go and how you push the envelope and and be true to her and what she does without you know um doing what we're not setting out to do right right and also kind of keeping the agreement that you have with your network because that's also not you know kind of what they set out to put on to their particular platform as well Right, right. I would say we pushed the envelope with Tubi <laughs> many times. It was a very, uh, it was a great learning season to figure out like how far you could go. <laughs> yeah. Well, that brings me to my final question, which was a perfect tee up. You know, um, if you guys get renewed for season two, what would you do differently? And would you want some of the same cast members to return? Or do you guys already kind of have a list of other individuals that you would love to be a part of it? I would take their phones away from them is what I would do to her. Not for eight weeks. The phone is their job though. Like we just said, they need their phones for the job. They can have hours that they use their phones. Okay. Um, I mean, that's kind of fair. I think that the phone sometimes hurt us, right? Because sometimes instead of like you and I are talking, you could either easily text somebody and be angry with someone on text and then we don't see it. And it's a hard story to tell. Um, what I would do differently, I think I would try to, even though there was, there's a lot of drama and there's always going to be drama with people living in a house, I would try to bring it back to business a lot more than we did this season. Um, as far as cast members, same cast members, I mean, I love our cast. I think our cast is great. I would like to see all of them back. Um, and, and maybe we would shake it up and bring some flesh, you know, fresh blood in as well. Ooh, and, and also, you know, now they kind of have their groove. Like, it's really hard the first season when you are inviting all of these strangers to live together for the first, well, I mean, minus Summer and Cody because they are together, but, but you know what I mean. When you're inviting the strangers into the house kind of that first season, you don't actually know what the group dynamics are going to be. But now that they've lived together for a period of time in season two, you know, it's a little bit easier. So maybe to your point, it'll be a little less drama because they already know what they're getting themselves into um, and a little more business. No, 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 KB. They have to. They have to finish business. I, I think there will be. <laughs> you said no, absolutely. I, yeah. not. <laughs> I think there'll be the equal, equal, if not more, amount of drama um, with more business on top. Okay. okay. Well, at least the more business is there. <laughs> Got it. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat of with the first. Really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. Thanks. So, hi, I'm KB with Nerdifals. How are you both? Good. Uh, good. How are you? I am doing all right. Okay, so I the first question I have to ask, because going on to a reality TV show with your partner, who you also work with, um, can be a lot, right, for like any two people. So how did your involvement on this show this season kind of really uh, enrich your relationship? You know, do you feel like you guys are like even tighter now, I think, because of the experience? We, so yeah, we, we, Prior to the show, we've been doing OnlyFans and kind of ba basically in business with each other for our entire relationship the last five years. So, you know, we've gone through our growing pains in that regard and stuff. So this this came up and it seemed just like the perfect next adventure for us to do. And while there are, you know, moments of error on the show from every housemate, including ourselves, we did leave feeling even closer than when we started and we came in already feeling like we had a great foundation and relationship and business relationship. Yeah. I, I feel like we were, were very a communicative couple already and we came into this not really knowing what would happen, but we kind of already like we're going into it, forgiving each other for things that might happen. But, you know, you do see us kind of getting a little bit of a fight halfway through the season. And honestly, I think it made us better, you know, you never put a couple who've been together and lived together for five years in a house with a bunch of other people. So it kind of brought up conversations we needed to have that we might have never had before. Uh, but overall, we definitely agree that we came out very stronger. 
for sure. Yeah, I love that. I'm glad because that's why I wanted to know if it enriched your relationship. You know, I feel like you had an advantage in the house because you have your partner there who will have your back, you know, kind of no matter what. And that can be helpful because you don't know what kind of personalities you're going to get when you um, just move into a house of, well, strangers. I mean, you know, like you guys may be familiar with each other's work, but you guys all have not lived together at yeah. the same time. So that no, could I will be... say we didn't we didn't know anyone in the house yeah. prior to or once we were there. Right. When you, what I also didn't realize is how quickly you get close with people because you're living with them 24 seven and being filmed all together. Yeah. But I, I would agree that, you know, having the partner there, there was that advantage of when things would happen or, or issues would come up. You have that soundboard, you have someone holding you accounting accountable. You have someone that you can seek advice from a trusted person already. And, and I, and I do view that as an advantage that we had. And then we were able to also then bounce ideas that we had and creative juices with other people in the house, which again, just all this just enriched our business and our relationship. Yeah. And I love that. So do you guys feel like um, sharing your relationship and your work on this show in particular has really helped to kind of eliminate the stigma or any misconceptions around the adult entertainment industry? Uh, honestly, Yes. I mean, we never got any kind of negative comments before, really. Uh, I think the biggest thing with me is, you know, I didn't I wasn't really open about it, like in my hometown, because I'm from a very small town. Everyone knows each other. Um, I mean, some people knew, but it wasn't like a very like common thing. And now that I'm on TV, it's out there and I'm honestly getting so much positivity from my hometown. I feel like if they would have found out I did this stuff without being on a show, it would have been more negative, but now they're they're probably like more, oh, but he's on a show, it's okay. So it was really kind of weird to think about that dynamic there, but um, it actually worked out for the best, so. <laughs> I love that, yeah. Cause I mean, the show was very, uh, you know, I was just talking to Amber and she was like, oh, do you think that we got the balance, you know, right of the show being sex positive? And I was like, honestly, absolutely. Like, I do think that it is an opportunity for people to see kind of, you know, sex work and this industry in a different light. Mm -hmm. um, and you guys are just, um, well, at, from a viewer's perspective, you guys are just your authentic selves. And so, you know, it's nice to be able to kind of see that. So my last question I do really have to ask, you know, was there ever a moment throughout the course of this season why, um, where either of you felt like you couldn't be your full self on camera? I don't, mm. I don't think I, I ever did. No. There were, I mean, even there were some times when there were moments where I felt like I was almost too much myself and I was like is yeah. that gonna bite me in gas <laughs> honestly you know the, the first the first week or two you're there you are maybe have, have some walls up but you know after being there day after day week after week you kind of forget about it and you just kind of do what you normally would do I mean that's kind of how I felt anyway yeah the, the people behind the scenes the cameramen and stuff you know there there was a camera in every room there's a cameraman in next to you every time you start talking about anything and you just you just really after a few days just start to zone it all out. And and I mean, we came in there wanting to break down walls and stigmas and show our show our relationship and show that behind all the creativity and everything we're doing, there's like a genuine connection and love that we have for each other. And we wanted to show that and show that we're also a real couple and we're going to have disagreements and fight along the way. Yeah. <laughs> so and yeah. we kind of we're on every platform and we show a lot of ourselves you know we are goofy on tiktok we kind of get into deep conversations on youtube and even when we got this we're like well i guess we're giving up the last little piece of privacy that we had and you know i don't regret it at all we had an amazing time we would do it again and yeah it it it's fun to watch back too when I have when I have Mormon family reaching out to me saying how cool it is to watch us grow our brand, I think that means we did something right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. That is a good highlight. But wait, now you did say that you didn't know you guys weren't familiar with anyone else's work in the house when you first got there? No, the like we just from the internet, no? No, the gay in the gay OF community is very separate from the oh. straight girl community. We didn't know any female creators until we walked in that house yeah really? so that, that's the ones we really learn from because we run our pages so differently night and day yeah honestly and th there was you know one other 
a gay content creator in the house, but he was mm -hmm. someone who had only been doing this less than a year. He lived in Atlanta across the country. So he was not someone we were familiar with as well. So it was really, it was really, really cool to come in and, and get little tidbits and takeaways from each person, even though we came in with more experience than a, lo a lot of the other people in the house, we still were able to learn things from everybody. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting because I kind of just assumed, like, I knew that you guys hadn't, you know, met in person or lived together, but I kind of assumed that, like, on the back end, you guys knew each other, like, it was a production thing almost. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay, yeah, they've been, you know, on each other's, you know, OF or um, Instagram even or whatever it is. So. Not us. So, like, the girls in the house did know of each other. A lot of them did know. So I think if there were other gay creators that we probably would have ended up knowing or had heard of them. Yeah. Just so yeah. happens that the one other one that was in the house, we were not familiar And I'm glad th th that we didn't know Brandon because it was really great growing a friendship with him along the way. And, you know, we might not have ever met him otherwise. And, you know, we were very close the whole season. So it was a very good experience meeting someone from a whole different city that we, we've been there once, I think, twice. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Oh, that's so awesome. Well, I thank you both for taking the time to chat with Nerdfiles. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah love the red, so red, the li li red oh, lip. Thank We're you. Sweet, so. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> well, I hope you guys have a good day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.